And my mentor said it to me like this, to pray without action is an act of pride. Mm. And to act without prayer mm. is an act of foolishness. Mm. So if yeah. you're in a state of depression, you pray, absolutely. Mm. Take yourself out of that situation. Go for a walk. Um, speak to somebody. Mm. Um, talk to a friend. Be open with people. So you pray, so you act as well. <laughs>
of God instant, instantly healing that depression. And we create that standard as a prescription to other people saying, if, if he doesn't do that to you, then that means you ain't got faith. Yes. And do you know what happens when someone is depressed and they're feeling like they're doing more to stuff wrong? Oh, I'm not a real Christian because I'm not having faith in God. Because if I really had faith in God, my depression would be gone, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're feeling even worse. But do you know what's, what's better than instruction? Comfort. We're told in the Bible to comfort each other all the time, encourage one another. And I think I, I'm, I'm really, really blessed by, by Psalmist David, right? In the Psalms, he speaks about Jesus, God being with him everywhere. Mm. His omnipresence was a comfort to him, right? And there were times where he would even come to a place of um, almost like kind of like fighting in his mind where he was like, so why are you downcast in me? I know what I'll do. I'll put my hope in the Lord. And, and you, you have to ask yourself these questions. Sometimes when we even look at Elijah, when he was depressed and suicidal, what did God do? He didn't take it away. No, he was like, here's food, because I know you're hungry. And you know what? You've got a long way to go. So I'm going to provide this. Sometimes it's even taking care of our body. Yeah. But at the, at the end of the day, like I said, it's, it's the, the, the comfort of God in itself that, that starts that healing. So my testimony is when I was depressed in my family home, I was praying every single day, God, take it away from me, God. And I would fight, I would wrestle with God because I'm like, God, are you real or not? Mm. This isn't your will for, for your daughter to be like this. Yeah. And do you know what? He gave me a divine revelation saying, you know what? I'm going to give you the grace right now to remove yourself from that situation. I'm going to put you in a different home. And I bought, I, and, and I rented my very first home. And from there, he was like, I want to partner with you. I want to heal that family. I want to heal your family. I want to heal you. I want to heal all the past traumas. And this is what I'm going to do. I am going to um, make sure that that distance, right, that you have with your family is going to start the healing process. Mm -hmm. When I distanced myself from the very situation that caused the depression, I was sober and alert enough to be able to make peace with, with the people that offended me as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And not being clouded by my trauma, I was able to really, really dissect that with God. Mm -hmm. And another way that he intervened was he was like, Isabella, I am going to heal you through these anointed therapists, through these anointed therapists. So God intervenes in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And I know how it may feel to people who are depressed because even David has felt that loneliness. He was like, God, why have you forsaken me? In fact, Jesus has even said that before. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we say, we say these things because in the moment we don't feel God. But there's a difference between knowing that God is there and feeling that God is there. Yeah. Because your feelings should never dictate who God is mm -hmm. or where he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think as Christians, we need to understand that even though we walk in the, in the, in the valley of the shadow of death, we know that he is there. Mm -hmm. Even when I make my bed in the pits of hell, you are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, even me, I remember times like um, growing up as a, I'll be transparent, like growing up as a, as a young carer, um, having to take care of my, my older brother and my mum during like my teenage years you miss out on a lot of things you know fear of missing out all that other stuff and you tend to get into a place of isolation where um you are depressed and you don't realize it because you're young maybe and you just think oh you know i'm just oversleeping because i just won't like to sleep not really mm. truly you're, you're depressed mm. um and one thing that the lord was teaching me through those years like and you know by the grace of god like i was I guess I was able to know the Lord from a young age, so I was able to journey through the, the, the period with him, was that literally what you're saying, like, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. Like, if I go up to the highest mountain, you're there. You know, darkness, I can try and cover my, I can try and cover myself with darkness. Even then, the darkness is as light to you. Like, like I always, <laughs> one of the funny things that like I, I speak about sometimes with God is that like, oh, like, Lord, you have night vision. Like, like, like he, he, I imagine him with these goggles and like I'm covering myself with all this stuff and he's just like I, I see you like it, you don't look any different to me mm -hmm. and you know what it's, it's actually in that place yeah where you get to know the Lord in ways that other people don't mm -hmm. the, the Bible says that the God, God is close to the broken hearted mm -hmm. it, 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 it says that for a reason I'm not saying that God isn't close to those who aren't broken hearted I'm yeah. just I'm yeah. just saying that the Bible says he's close to those who are broken hearted and so actually when you're in a broken hearted space and you're in depression mm. that's an opportunity mm. to know him so deeply it's yeah. not actually uh, a negative actually it's a positive it's a benefit mm. being and this may sound crazy but being in a place of depression whereby maybe the world isn't satisfying your needs mm. and actually you're realizing how the world systems are actually broken you are in the perfect position 
to make God your everything because he's starting to shake your idols and yeah. some things so it, it really depends on the depression as well obviously some people can be depressed because maybe they're not um they don't their expectations they have for their lives um it's not happening right now mm. or or they could be depressed because they look at the world around them mm. and they're like wow this is actually terrible but that's where the kingdom of god starts mm. and that's when you can be born again and it's it's a beautiful place to start from like it really really is as as backwards mm. as it may seem sometimes so yeah that, that, that's i think kind of what isabella was saying i think as a christian there's certain shame associated with like having depression um and i think i had a perception because for me it was my almost my depressive like state that brought me to god mm. and i think i had that perception that okay now that i have christ what's what's depression i don't know what that is yeah and so when i experienced it i was like I think there was that confusion there but I think one thing that the enemy does he attacks the mind yeah. and I think that's the importance of like Ephesians and you know having that armor of God on having that helmet of salvation and, and a helmet protects the brain it protects the mind mm. and having that protecting your thoughts mm. because it's very easy for the enemy to be like does God really love you to say mm. those things mm. that can bring you back to where you were before you mm. gave your life to Christ and I think um Christians do experience depression, but it's about remembering God's sovereignty and it's also about worship because worship shouldn't just be when we're when we're ha- happy, when we're joyful. Mm. Worship should be in the midst of the storm and I think that was one of the struggles and still is a struggle for me to do actually mm. when I'm experiencing like contradictory emotions because that's the difference actually between happiness and joy because joy is connected to God. And God is always sovereign, yeah. whereas happiness is like a fleeting emotion. Yeah. And so having joy, even though my situation looks bleak, even though my situation looks, I, I can't see outside of it. Yeah. And being able to have that joy, that means like being connected to God. Um, and I think just praising in the midst of it. And it's going to be hard. You're not going to, it's going to be hard to like just praise God because your your internal is is it's like even almost having a battle mm. um but it's in those times that we need to like praise the most it's those times that we need to draw closer to god so i think even in that the fact that there's prayer there is important but it's also what else are you doing to connect to make, connect more to god are you reading, reading the word um are you seeking him in different ways so i think that is how like of course depression is such a big thing so i, I can't give like the bullet point of how to deal with depression because every person is, is different um mm. but i think for me just as a christian i think what i had to do was realize that god is sovereign and like my how i'm feeling at the moment um i know the time will pass and also kind of what you said as well is that how can we really learn from something if god takes us out each time like if we ex- experience depression like and i know in that state you're like god i just want to stop how i'm feeling i just want to mm. feel better but sometimes we learn the best through that trial through that that hardship we learn how to overcome it and so we can say that testimony to other people as well we can share to other people how how we overcame that and that's a testimony in itself Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. can i just go on, go on. on like in terms of what isabella said and what you said as well and i think it's the practical aspect of also praying um and dealing with um, depression or any kind of hurt um, so what my mentor said it to me like this to pray without action is an act of pride mm. and to act without prayer mm. is an act of foolishness mm. so if you're in a state of depression you pray absolutely mm. but like you said take yourself out of that situation go for a walk um, speak to somebody um, talk to a friend um, be open with people so you pray but you act as well um, but you just don't go for a walk you just don't speak to a friend without praying mm-hmm. so you have to combine the practical aspect of it and the prayer aspect of it as well yes yeah, so i think that's a good way of um, combat um, challenging and fighting against um, things like depression yeah that's good i think like just to i guess round off like the conversation and yeah i think um, even with this whole depression thing and praying hard enough in these things i think one of the things that we kind of uh, touched on is just like uh how are you praying you know what what are you actually saying to god you don't have to be these rapid religious prayers that's not going to solve your depression mm. speak to him like you speak to a person 
I think that's one thing that we miss in the body of Christ that you can actually talk to God like he's your father and if you're feeling bad tell him hey I'm, I'm feeling bad today just help me through this day mm-hmm. that's good enough mm-hmm. and God will do what he does you know and the second thing yeah speaking about counseling external uh, therapy in the Bible Jesus is called wonderful counselor I think we've missed that verse in the body of Christ I don't know how I don't know why but G- God is actually a counselor mm-hmm. so he actually like counseling is a ministry yeah same way God is a healer and mm-hmm. we have healers right we have people who heal people yeah guess what we have people who counsel people and he's joy and I wanted to mm. say as well bro oh, sorry oh the ver- there's a verse that says let the peace of God reign when you think about a king and his rulership he reigns over people mm. and so when reigning is involved in that verse it means there's a conflict happening inside your heart so when it's saying let the peace of God reign it means it has to reign over every other emotion it has to reign over depression it has to reign over anxiety yeah. it has to reign over insecurity it has yeah. to reign 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 it has to take its hold as 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 it's um, in your heart, rightful throne, you know, he reigns in your heart, right? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> no, but honestly, depression is real and it doesn't make you any less of a Christian, period. Wow.